Hey booktubers and fans of his Dark Materials trilogy. Exciting news. Today we are going to be talking about Philip Pullman's latest short story, Serpentine. But before we dive into that, I wanted to take just a minute to share with you the reason why I produce these videos on books. Books create ideas, ideas change the world. So let's change the world one book at a time. They're back! That is Lyra and Pant Lyman. Once again, this pair is traveling up north because Lyra has a question. Can you read this book without reading his Dark Materials trilogy? Of course, technically, you can. No one will stop you. However, this short story heavily, heavily, heavily references his Dark Materials trilogy, specifically the last book of this series, which is The Amber Spyglass. Even being the number one self-proclaimed Philip Pullman fan. He's, he's a pro? Really? I still found myself struggling to remember all the little nuances that were referenced back to The Amber Spyglass. And I read it the last time within this year. As a welcome bonus, this book is beautifully illustrated. The illustrations have a hand-drawn feel to them. They are an absolute welcome addition to those of us who are not visually creative. Because they have this hand-drawn feel, it gives the book this unique feeling that it was created for each one of the readers individually. Here's the deal. The biggest complaint about this book is that it's short and it has a list price of $13. One reviewer wrote that it took only 15 minutes to read. At the time, I thought this must be a gross exaggeration. Sadly, it was pretty close to the truth. Remember, the last book was The Amber Spyglass. It was 467 pages long. This book is kind of like eating half of a fun size candy bar after we were used to eating king size candy bars. This book felt like sand going through my hands. It was gone too soon and I couldn't prevent it from running out. However, let's not be all doom and gloom. If you hadn't seen a beloved family member or friend in years and you had the opportunity to visit with this person for 15 minutes, how much would you pay? Would you pay $13? Of course, you would not hesitate to shell out 13 bucks. The shortness of this story actually worked towards its benefit. It gave it a dreamlike feel and a nostalgic feeling. After I read it, I was emotional. It was like I just got to spend time with a good friend. On one hand, very happy that you got to visit once again, but on the other, sad that they're again no longer here. At the back of the book, Philip Pullman wrote a really endearing note. The reason why he wrote Serpentine is that he received a call from a charity asking for a donation. Wow, Philip Pullman, you really set the bar really high. It's a good reminder that we need to do better. Personally, if I get a, call, a phone call from a number that I don't recognize, my Google call filtering will just hang up. Hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. So many people complain about how they want the world to be a better place, but they're not willing to sacrifice anything to make it better. This is a good reminder that we can all do better. I also give major props to Philip Pullman for writing a strong female lead. Back in 1995, when The Golden Compass was first published, and even today, 
strong male leads typically lead to bigger sales. Philip Pullman went the unconventional route and I really do appreciate it. Usually I donate all of my books back to the library, but in this instance, I think I'm gonna hold on to this book. Feels special. Feels like there's a lesson in there that I still need to learn. Of course, it wasn't already obvious, I would give this book a five star rating. Definitely pick up your copy today. Now we're going to go into some spoiler information. So if that's something you're sensitive to, please feel free to drop and rejoin after you've read the book. Three, two, one. At the beginning of the book, Lyra and Pan have a plan. They are going to go up north and meet with Dr. Lancilius of the Witches Council. Lyra would like to understand what happened when she and Pan separated in the world of the dead. This happened back in the Amber Spyglass. Upon arriving, Lyra and Pan um, greet Dr. L who has a serpent demon. The two demons go outside while Dr. L and Lyra have a little chat. Dr. L ex explains that the witches who also separate from their demons are kind, patient to their demons when they return, but they don't ever talk about what happened. Lyra, of course, is sad because she wanted to know, she wanted to get a little bit more information what happened when she and Pan were separated. Lyra and Pan, they begin to return from their visit, but there's a catch. Lyra discovers from Pan that Dr. L's demon, the serpent, they can separate, they've been separated. Very interesting because Dr. L never mentioned it to Lyra in their chat. So the question is why? Why didn't he mention it when he was speaking to Lyra? She went on this gigantic journey up north to ask this question and he didn't mention that he was also separated from his demon. Was he trying to protect his demon's feelings? Was he trying to give Lyra and Pan the time and space to work it out between themselves? Let me know in the comments what you think. Lyra and Pan, on the way back, start talking about what happened when they were separated. This also goes back to the theme, when you want an adventure, sometimes you have to look no further than your own front door. When I first read this book, I thought it was very simple. I will admit that I was also concerned about it running out too quickly before I was emotionally ready to let it go. On the second time through, I read it and I came to a completely different conclusion. The story is very complex. One story within the story that stuck out to me and I was noodling on, why is this even in the book? There was a story about a porter Peter the Porter, who has a demon who is a, a little dog. He's a terrier. They never touch. They never talk. They're both very unhappy. And of course, Lyra and Pan agree, we're never going to be like that. Why was that in the book? Taking some literary licenses, you can, you know, disagree with me or share your thoughts in the comments. If a demon is an extension of yourself, then are you talking to your other self? Are you being 100% creative or 100% logical? That you should integrate both sides pretty well. They should both talk and be well blended. Are we giving time to nurture both sides, our creative side and our logical side, both our right brain and our left brain? Do we take time for creative endeavors? That is a lot to ask out of a short story. I did mention that Philip Pullman is brilliant and I'm his number one fan. The other thing that kind of threw me for a loop was the title of the book, Serpentine. Yes, Dr. Lancilius Demon was a serpent, a snake. However, he wasn't the main character or even really the main point of the book. So why the title? 
Then I looked up the definition of serpentine. It has four different definitions if you're interested. One of them is to move in a winding path. To move in a winding path. I did mention that Philip Pullman is brilliant, right? If you enjoy all things books and believe that books can change the world, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Please pick up Philip Pullman's latest short story, Serpentine. You will not be disappointed. I'm Lisa of Troy, everyone. Peace. Hey!